This is Lord Rick. It's February 21st of 2014. What I'm filming, what you see here is Mars, which I can obviously, you know it's not a UFO because with the UFOs I can zoom in really close because they're much closer to our orbit. And I had read a report recently that there's been a couple motherships in the sky, so I decided to put it to the test and see if I could find you know, went, did a little sky watching. That's my roof. Kind of an object in the sky. Based on the measurements, it'd have to be massive. Now you've seen how it was with Mars. I could not get close. Mars is fairly close to Earth, and so we know this object that's flashing is much closer to us. Lights are pulsating very quickly. A lot of orange. A lot of orange, red, a little purple, some white. Here's the kicker. Let's zoom out for a second so you can see my roof. Definitely a massive object. I've been documenting these UFOs. I've only seen UFOs recently. It's been about a two and a half week gap and I didn't see no UFOs until I realized that tonight there are two objects in the, sky. in the sky. One hovers over the central Nevada desert mountains. There's a lot of mountain ranges. The other one, look at that. Purple, blue, aqua. We have dual UFOs tonight. Let's just call them the two sisters. You know, even though they flash different objects, they're roughly the same height in the sky, and they're around the same height, which could be, you know, just above orbit, but they're both very close enough for me to film. prove it to you. You've seen Mars, right? It's an object that's much closer than Mars. Now look at all the pulsations and all the colors. Now do you believe me? This is this this object is hovering over the Sierras, probably the Carson Iceberg Wilderness Area. It's very, it's not, it's above the mountains, but it's high above. We're talking maybe 40,000 feet up, but I can still get it in my zoom. I can't get Mars. But you see that? There's my roof. See the corner? So anyways, tomorrow we got a very special investigation planned. As you know, I've got a Jeep, so it'll allow me to travel through the mountains a lot more safely. It has 4x4 four four and pretty good-sized wheels on it. It sits higher up. But tomorrow we're going to go visit some Masonic caves built by Masons or Miwok Native Americans. It's a hill, so it's a very sacred place, very special place where five Masonic meetings took place till they built the, vol the volcano, the city of volcano, or the, the semi-ghost town of volcano. That's where the caves lie on the edge, and you can see them. We're going to go visit the caves. The Masons held meetings till they built the Masonic Hall to have meetings. I guess they thought that damp, dark places did not serve good for a secret meeting, especially if it was cooler out. And then the Odd Fellows, which is another fraternal organization, also used the Masonic Hall. I know I'm not pronouncing it right. 
But uh, anyways, two fraternal organizations shared the volcano Masonic Hall. Don't know if it still stands. I know the amphitheater's still there, the old haunted hotel, which I'm going to try to get in for an investigation tomorrow. I'm also going to visit two cemeteries in Volcano, and in the caves in Volcano are very interesting. But we got, after all that's planned, we're going to spend the second half of the afternoon up at Salt Springs Reservoir, which is below Bear River Reservoir, which is an intense area for strange UFO activity, lights in the sky, Bigfoot sightings, and, and you know, I'm not going to tell you, but that part of the National Forest, I see my Bigfoot sighting. So I'm returning to a, an area where I'm going to be hiking along the reservoir in the canyon to see if I can find any Bigfoot evidence because I have found within two, three mile radius of that area other signs of Bigfoot. We're just going to the reservoir. We stood above the reservoir on a cliff, but tomorrow we'll be down at the bottom there of the dam and we can really look for prints but anyways we have a ufo it's moving out it's harder to catch and we also have mars in the sky and i'm going to show you how it how it di differs from the objects there's mars can you zoom when you zoom in too close despite how bright mars is See, that's, that's a planet right there. It never changes colors, it just stays red. Mostly a solid color. The last object I showed you could change four or five colors in one second. Every two milliseconds, it'll change a different color. Very vibrant. And we have another strange object in the sky. Just above my roof. This one I'm having a lot of trouble getting. It's higher up in orbit, but these motherships may look like stars, but they're not. By zooming in on them, you can sometimes see machinery moving around. It's further out, that's all, but it's still flashing colors. And so the UFOs and strange lights above Nevada, rural Nevada, they continue here in February 21st of 2014. And tomorrow we'll be looking for Bigfoot, Ghost. We're going to do a semi-ghost town exploration. We've been to Volcano before. It's on our website. But we're going to think of it as a reinvention. We're going to redo it, but we're going to do the whole town and the cemeteries, the saloon, the hotel. We're going to do the whole thing. It's going to be a wonderful project to add to our site, plus the caves. And this just really tops it off to get a couple of UFOs in the sky. Just a matter of six hours before we head out of here. And then to go to Salt Springs Reservoir, we'll be up in the Sierras, along the Muckalumne River, and hiking in the Muckalumne Wilderness. We pan out. That light's moving further out, but it's it's just still a bright light in the sky. When you look at my roof. There's a nice view of it. See it phasing in and out in my roof. Just above my roof. So you can kind of compare brightness, get an idea where the object is. But I'm more concerned about this object that's hovering over the Sears. It's close, it's changing a lot of colors. This is the main object. I had over a thousand places I could have gone tomorrow. I just felt like going in the Sierra foothills and in the Sierras. It's been 70 degrees. Next week they said two feet of snow, but tomorrow's going to be 70 degrees there. And where this UFO is hovering over, we'll be hiking and driving through canyons and just beautiful scenery any time of year. Looking for Bigfoot along the Muckalumne River. 
out in the wilderness tomorrow. It's going to be great. Smoking a couple joints on the lake. Around historic volcano, go in the old saloon, have a brew. Sit in the old 1800 saloon. Anyways, this is Lord Wreck. Check us out. www.paranormalghostsociety.org And this is this UFO is seen in the Sierra Triangle. Which, by the way, these triangles, a lot of them match up with, like, Devil Triangle, Bermuda Triangle. They're all connected if you adjoin the points on a map. And ships and planes and disappear in the triangles. In this case, in the Sears, it's pilots and hikers and missing people and a lot of Bigfoot activity where these UFOs are seen. I've caught lots of evidence. And so sometimes we think Bigfoot is maybe an alien explorer and gathers information about us, the woods, the landscape. In case of alien invasion someday, we may be hiding in the woods. These creatures might know the woods inside and out. They may not become our friends. I mean, as it is right now, you got people trying to shoot at these creatures. As much as any craft that come low, the government tries to shoot down also like these UFOs. Imagine if I call the Air Force, they'd send in a couple jets, they might even try to shoot it down. I mean, it's just, it's a hostile act. I'm a researcher, not a killer. I preserve all things. I'm a scientist of the unknown, and, you know, all things I preserve, alien li even alien life, animals, nature, all these places, historic sites. We're a preservation group. We're a preservation adventure group, and I'll tell you, this is, it's very adventurous to film these objects. It's quite a pleasure. It's quite an adrenaline rush. over the Sierra mountain range between Nevada and California. This is Lord Rick. And one last time I'll film the other object. That faint object you see, the, that's the red planet, Mars. They come up above Mars, actually more over my roof. Earlier, this object was given off of all kinds of reds and oranges and many different colors. There's no two red planets in the sky. An orange glowing ball of light, an orange pulsating light. Just like the other object, every two milliseconds, it's a little bit different of a shade or variant of a color that it pulsates. Anyways, this is Lord Rick, and I'm just out here enjoying the Milky Way. And, well, you know, tomorrow I could become a space cowboy. You can take me up to orbit if you want. You can take me to see the stars and the planets. I have no issue with that, but please, no probing. Because, you know, hostile races may take your eyeball out and put it back in. They may even eat you for supper. That might explain all these vanishings. And with these motherships, a massive mothership seen near our moon, strange craft docking at the ISS. There's a lot of strange things going on in our skies. And that's what we could be looking at is a couple motherships housing thousands, billions of aliens and UFOs and 
photon and plasma weapons and laser weapons, because that's the type of weapons that interplanetary life would probably have. Even in ancient texts, it talks about the gods that ascended from the skies, actually aliens with technology, but they mistaken that technology. And some of them artifacts were said to have energy as if lightning or beams shooting out. So laser technology existed thousands of years ago, possibly in ancient times. Some of these submerged cities like Atlantis that went down were said to have some of that alien technology. So if these are giant motherships, there's a lot of technology that goes into something this big, either jumping or traveling the Milky Way to get here. Like I said, it'd be nice if they were non-hostile, but the government continues to try to collect and harvest the technology, including the Russians. And a lot of there's a lot of cases like Roswell. It's to learn this technology, but keep it from the people because it might scare the masses and it would also change religion all these ancient religions as you know it. So just a little bit of history lesson. Little ancient aliens blotter and a UFO that's very close to us but very high up in orbit. It's given off brilliant colors. It's It's got to be a massive object. I could zoom in on Mars. You can barely see it. It's just a little red dot. But this I can zoom in much more closely. It's much more closer to Earth. And that's not a star because star see the thing is about stars is they flicker if this was a star why would it be closer than mars and that's the whole point of my tonight's experiment i want to show you that i could not even get this close on mars or this close on mars it's a large object it's very close you can see machinery spinning in it if you look real careful this is the type of footage most ufologists dream about Anyway, check us out. www.paranormalghostsociety.org